I have been playing what seems like endless Cyberpunk 2077 since the day before release. Every free moment I have, I seem to be playing the game, and I, I just really enjoy it. But the one thing that's been glaringly obvious to me is that I really wish I would have done things differently with all of those initial hours of gameplay. So this video, I'm going to cover the things I would have done differently on my first playthrough, and I've what I've been doing since on my subsequent playthroughs. This is my second playthrough that I'm actually sitting down with now with a complete playthrough. Um, and to give you a little information uh, on how I normally approach new games is I normally avoid pre-release rumors and articles from gaming sites because so much can change before release and those sites are mostly out for clicks and, and not actually for the gaming community itself. And, and even as of making this video, Cyberpunk 2077 has been out what, for two weeks now, and, uh, and many gaming sites still have the identical word-for-word -word, copy paste information that is just often inaccurate enough to make you wonder what you're doing wrong because they haven't taken any time to, to actually update their stuff. It is unfortunate that so many gaming sites just copy and paste each other's word-for-word, -word, uh, you know, just fill in the remaining pages with ads, you know. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. The, the, the short version is the fact that I don't follow pre-release rumors and gaming sites coupled with the fact that I stay away from uh, that I stayed away from the 10 year development drama of this game meant that I went into day one with very few expectations. Um, it was just a new game whose description, you know, piqued my interest. So without further ado, one of the, the very first things that the biggest thing that I would have done differently and I am doing differently um, is just slowing down. When I started playing, I focused on the main story. Just only, you know, I would only divert to side quests whenever the game forced me to wait uh, or when it kept me from talking to Judy or Pan Am. Like if, if there was something came up for Judy or something came up from Pan Am, I would diverge and go do whatever they, they asked to do. Um, and, uh, and before I knew it, you know, I got the message that said I was about to finish the main story and that any side quests would have to wait until that part of the story was finished. And I was okay with that because, you know, the little I picked up from searching for the occasional quest tip during that playthrough, um, I got the impression that the game would let you continue on and finish up all the quests, you know, later on, you know, after you finish the main story. And that was not entirely true. It, it is true in the sense that you can go back and do those things. But it's more along the lines of uh, Breath of the Wild, if you ever played that game, is you, you finish the game, you get credits. And sure, you can pick up where you left off after the main story, but only by returning to a previous save point before you embarked on that final part of the quest, which meant, which the game conveniently does for you, you know, and, and lets you keep going. Um, but all of a sudden, you know, I found myself back to where I was hours before that, um, looking at that same screen, warning me that the game was about the end. Uh, but... Uh, uh, instead, uh, instead of going into the building, I turned around and focused on the side quests and, um, which I learned later on actually doing some of those side quests affects, uh, some of the main story after all. So I, I really wish I would have slowed down instead of focusing on just knock out the main story quests, then go back and do all the side stuff, clean up and learn about the world. I wish I would have played through learning about everything else. And, and that's mainly the theme of this video too. Um, so and then the next thing. I, I wish I would have done better was um, ahead of time doing some research on a few things. And one of them being uh, the, the romance limitations, right? Um, I, I would have learned a little bit more of that because I, I, right out of the gate, I created a female character who looked totally awesome. And immediately upon meeting Judy, I knew, okay, that was going to be uh, the character I'd romance, right? And I'm sure most people hit that the, mi the minute they meet Judy. But, well, it wasn't until I started hanging out with Pan Am that I started thinking a little differently. And around that time, the way I was playing both the, the, the side quests, Judy's drama started to annoy me a little bit. And uh, um, then after a lot of dialogue, I just kept getting the friends-only vibe from Pan Am. Uh, so I jumped onto the internet only to learn that you actually had to play a male character if you wanted to romance Pan Am. So I didn't, I wasn't aware of those limitations going in. And since I wanted to restart the game anyway, since I wanted to do a second playthrough, uh, uh, starting out doing things differently, um, I decided I would just re-roll um, a male character so that I could, so, so Pan Am and I could, you know, take things to the next level. And uh, uh, now I'm not going to get into the Judy versus Pan Am debate. You know, we all have a different tastes and don't get me wrong. I still plan on jumping into a previous save with my female character and totally romancing Judy. Uh, I just wish... I knew about the gender romance requirements before I started. Um, sure, it's all over the internet, but so were spoilers, and it 
can be tough to get one without the other. Uh, another thing, a part of the research would have also been knowing the consequences. Uh, there, there's, there's, uh, knowing what are the outcome of some decisions from a, a rewards perspective, or at least a little more explanation would have helped. Uh, a good example would be Delamain's quest. And I'm not going to spoil Delamain's quest in this video. You know, I just want to point out that if I knew what would happen to him and what I would expect as an outcome, you know, I would have chosen differently. Thank goodness for save points, because I was able to to change my mind. Um, and and yeah, I know a lot in life, you can't always know outcomes, consequences ahead of time. Uh, but my interpretation of the dialogue in the game, I don't think it was always the way the devs intended me to, uh, to in, uh, interpret a, a certain line of dialogue. So I would occasionally avoid selecting a certain response because I felt it might be rude. You know, I might have read something as rude or heartless, only to find out that that was actually the more, you know, the better option to pick and wasn't as rude or as heartless as, as, as I had interpreted it. Um, so, so I would have, I would have liked to have understood that a little bit differently. Um, and then aside from doing research on, on just romance and outcomes, uh, or at least having that information in the game available to me a little bit better, um, which is another thing that this game and a lot of modern games really lack is, is, um, a lot of good help information within the game itself. Just, it, it lets you, it forces you to go out to Reddit and to other places online, gaming sites and stuff like that, who, are, who is full of misinformation. So it's really unfortunate. But anyway, uh, the other, another thing I would have done, uh, and the final thing I really want to point out is I would have actually spent some time with uh, crafting and you know advancing the skill trees. Now, on my first playthrough, I burned through the main quest line all the way to the credits without crafting or upgrading a single item and with very minimal attention to my skill trees. I just dumped points into skill trees without really paying much attention to them just to kind of clear them off. Uh, on my second playthrough, however, you know, I made leveling and earning money to pay off Victor a priority right up front. Before I was doing anything really in the main story, I was focusing on clearing the map of all the question marks, exclamation marks, and, and you know the police requests that are out there. And those seemed more challenging than the main quest, believe it or not. And since I was doing them kind of early on, and I found that the, the crafting weapons and upgrades and, and very carefully building skill trees to fit my playstyle made the game more immersive, a lot more fun. And uh, you know, I, my, my character just, not only did it seem more powerful, but it, it really seemed to cater towards the way I played. Um, the first playthrough just felt like a grind. And while the second has been a lot of fun, I'm still chipping away at it. I am taking a lot more time this time. Uh, to go through it and I am enjoying it. It's been a long time since the game has had me so focused that before I know it, it's like three in the morning. So um, I'm truly enjoying the game. I just wish I would have done those things differently on my first playthrough because I, I felt like that first playthrough was a real waste of time for me. I did have fun, I did enjoy it, but I could have been having this much fun had I taken the time. And it's, 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 it's on me, it's, it, it's not you know saying anything negative about Cyberpunk or, or, or CD Projekt Red or anything, great game, love it. Um, it's just uh, the way I approached it and, and I approached it that way because I was under the impression that just knock out the main story so that you can then um, just really then take your time to experience this big world um, when that in some games that's possible but in this game I feel like that's not a good idea. It's a good idea to, to immerse yourself into the world, get to know the people, um, explore the relationships, explore the world, explore the, the dialogue and the way the different factions interact with each other. And, and then by the time you get there, um, you, you do feel like you're at the end of a journey. And um, uh, that's the way I'm approaching it this time. That's the way I think, that's the way I wish I would have done it to begin with. But anyway, that's, that's my point. Uh, that's my perspective on, on Cyberpunk, my first playthrough, and, uh, and what I'm doing right now. So um, anyway, take care. See you in the next video. I got you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, it really helps out. And if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say and I'll catch you on the next video.